Hey everyone, Canuck here. Welcome back to Course Design 101. It is bunker time. So I had mentioned that I would not do bunkers until the game patched the little issue with when you're sculpting land, you could see inches and feet, but right now I can only see feet. This is a bit of a bummer for bunkers because we, we need to work in really small increments for bunkers in order to sculpt them properly. And having just the feet doesn't really work that well. But in order to work around this, to show newer designers uh, exactly kind of the measurements we're dealing with, we're actually going to switch over to the metric system. So those Americans who are, <laughs> you know, who know the imperial system pretty well, get a little metric system lesson. It won't be too difficult. Um, now with bunkers, I could, this could easily be a two hour tutorial. Uh, there are so many different ways of placing bunkers. There's a ton of strategy involved in bunkers, in size of bunkers, in how to plant them, um, how to sculpt them. But because this is just course design 101, we're just going to go over the basics. I'm going to show you probably the three most popular ways or the three ways I use the most in creating my bunkers and then how to sculpt them. And uh, I'm also going to show you a little bit how to make a bunker in the fairway if you wanted to make a bunker in the fairway too. So we'll go through all that today. So in order to show you the three methods, I'm going to make three bunkers on this hole. I'm going to put, I'm going to have two fairway bunkers and then maybe I'll put a bunker up on the green here, the green side bunker. Now I'm going to show you three different methods and you're going to kind of see how they differ in terms of how they look. What I suggest is for each course you do, pick a um, pick a style that works for you. Don't mix and match them, otherwise your your bunkers are going to look really inconsistent because it really comes down to the how you want the edges to look. Okay, a couple of techniques kind of have softer edges, and then there's another technique that has more of a, a harder edge. So you need to de decide what you want to do. All right, so. We're going to go to Create Surfaces, Bunkers, and this menu should look familiar. It's exactly the same as for Fairways, Rough, Greens. We've got over this already. Brush, Spline, uh, and then you can adjust the path width too. So the first way I'm going to show you is using brushes. Okay, we haven't used brushes a whole lot. We've been splining most of the time, but uh, a lot of people use brushes for their bunkers. So there are lots of options for bunkers. You know, you can, if you want, just pick a shape, plop it down, Pick another shape, plop it down, but very quickly you're going to kind of run out of cool looking bunkers. Yes, you can advance edit them if you want. I'll make them interesting shapes and all that, but we want a little bit of variety, okay? So what I like to do is take different shapes or maybe even the same shape and chain them together to make my own. So my favorite uh, uh, shapes are this one and this one. Uh, but again, you can use whatever you want. There's some nice little round bunkers if you just kind of want to make pot-like bunkers. Oh, pot bunkers. We should talk about that. I didn't mention that because I've got some questions about that. Can you make pot bunkers? You cannot make traditional sod wall pot bunkers just in the bunker menu. There are some workarounds. Some people are able to kind of insert like hedges and things like that to give the illusion of a sod wall bunker or they use retaining walls a bit. Um, but you can't really make a true, true pot bunker, which sucks. Um, so yeah, just getting that out of the way. Unfortunately, you can't make real good legitimate pot bunkers in this game. Okay, anyway, back to our shapes. Like I said, I kind of like these two shapes the best, this guy and this guy. So what I do is I start with my one shape. You now I kind of decide how big I want the bunker to be. I kind of want this bunker to be, you know, maybe about this size in here. So what I like to do is just put one down and then maybe I will adjust the advanced edit a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit smaller, attach it, maybe make another one down here, attach it, okay? You know, and then I can maybe just use half shapes if I want, just to fill things out a little bit. You really have to experiment with this, okay? I, I, sometimes I remake bunkers 10, 15 times, just kind of pick a shape that you want. We'll just use this for, just for short sake, 
I, I could spend a while just trying to select what I want the shape to be for one bunker. Okay, so now let's get right down deep and actually look at the bunker. So as you can see here, um, the game kind of automatically flattens and sinks the bunker down for you. So it, it, make, it, it turns it into a bit of a shallow bunker, but it does add some depth to it. But I want to add a little bit more depth to this bunker. So in order to do that, that's, this is where we're going to be doing our, what we call kind of micro sculpting. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to flatten this bunker just to make it easy to work with. So we'll flatten, but as you can see, there are there is still, as you can see, some depth here. So it, it kind of goes down a bit, but we want to make that a little bit more. So we want to sculpt inside the bunker, and we also want to sculpt outside the bunker. So I need to go into my settings menu now, and I need to switch over to the metric system, which hopefully in the next couple days, you're not going to have to do this step because inches will show up. You can go metric or mix, doesn't matter. I don't even do, I just use the imperial system and I kind of eyeball it just because I've done it so many times. But for new designers, I think this will be helpful for you. Okay, now I'm going to kind of, um, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of depth to this bunker. And you would think, oh, if you're adding depth, you would select the rays, landscape rays. Actually use landscape flatten. It gives you a bit of a better look. Landscape raise is a little bit inconsistent. I'm gonna go to landscape flatten. And believe it or not, we're gonna pick this fuzzy brush. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, it's down to height 0 0.01, so that's at one centimeter. For the sweet spot for bunkers, I find for kind of an average depth bunker for the Imperial system is about two to three inches. Okay, so in the metric system, that is kind of between five and seven and a half centimeters. So we're looking to kind of find between 0 0.005 and 0 0.007, or sorry, 0 0.05 and 0 0.07. So a little bit of like bunker math here. So I'm going to select a point. I'm going to make the, the dot pretty small. Okay, and I'm actually going to raise it. I'm not going to lower it. I'm going to raise it up until I hit about 0 0.6. So I didn't go very far. Okay, about 0.5 or 0.6. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down my A button and I'm just going to kind of paint the edges. So I'm just going to let go of the A button and watch what it does. See how it sinks it down a little bit more? Okay, if you go over it twice, it'll make it even deeper. So if you want it to do that, you can, but try to go over every spot just once. Okay, so I'm kind of going over the edges now. Holding it down. And you're just kind of painting your bunker. Adding some depth to it. Dun, 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 just like this. And then I kind of look around and say, okay, are there any spots kind of like sticking up that I don't like? Maybe here. I just bring that down a little bit. And you know, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you want to add some more depth to it, you can also work around the bunker lips on the outside. So to work around the bunker lips on the outside, I actually like to use the landscape raise tool. And I like to go up about a foot to two feet. So that's a just over 30 centimeters would be a foot. So again, I'm going to select this tool, a little fuzzy brush, and I'm going to go up to about 0.3 or so. You can see it raises up pretty, pretty good. And again, I'm just going to kind of paint the edge here. You can kind of see it being raised. I'll let go. You can see it's bringing that bunker lip up a little bit. But again, you can really experiment with what, what you like. You might raise this up a lot more. It really depends on what you want for your bunker. Okay. I don't have to go around all of them. Sometimes I just go along the, uh, the back edge, but just for this sake, we're going to go over the whole thing. Okay, and now we have a fairly nice kind of flat bottomed bunker. Okay, now I'd like to be able to see that bunker a little bit better from the T. As you can see, if you look at the T box, talking about sight lines again, I would like to see that front edge show up a little bit more. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my raise tool and I'm just going to drop it down and I might bring that up a bit. 
Okay, right, so as you see, can I see now you're opening up more of the bunker? Again, this is just something to play with until you kind of find that sweet spot. You know, the blind bunkers are fine too, depending on the situation, but I would like a bunker like this to show up. So, you know, I, I think that's okay. Visual intimidation with your bunkers, I think, really helps in terms of what you want your course to look like. Okay, so that is one way of doing a bunker. Okay, another way you can do a bunker is you can use the spline function. Now, when you are splining bunkers, I kind of like to be really precise. So I'm going to bring my, um, my path width all the way down to the minimum it can possibly be. I kind of compare it to like using a fine tip pen for making an outline as opposed to like a crayon. Okay, so I, I like to make it as narrow as I can. And now you can just spline whatever you want. Now, again, what I suggest, so you're not just kind of splining like crazy, is give yourself an idea with the measure tool of kind of what you want your bunker to look like. So maybe I kind of want it to do, I'm just spamming A here. Maybe I just want it to look like this. Which is a very similar shape to actually what's in the game, but you know, maybe I just want it to look like that. So all I would have to do is, in the spline tool, just kind of trace it. Again, I, I use more splines than I probably need to, but... You know? So it just kind of creates this little strip. But, just like with fairways and everything, we just need to fill the spline. And I like to smooth the path out. Let's just delete this distance marker so we can see it a bit better. As you can see, that bunker compared to this bunker, this is a lot smoother edge. So if you want kind of nicer, smoother edged bunkers, I would go with the spline technique. Yeah, but if you want kind of rougher looking bunkers, again, I would go with this technique. So let's just practice some more sculpting. I'm going to select my little fuzzy brush. I'm going to go down to about, or going to go up to about point, point 0.5 to point, 0.05 to point 0.07, or 2 inches to 3 inches. That's kind of the sweet spot. And I'm just going to trace around my bunker. Okay. This is again something that definitely pays off if you take a little more time with it. Alright, so there's my, that's actually pretty good. This middle part's a little bit high, so I might drop that down a little bit. There we go. And then I can just raise the lip if I want. You don't have to do this step. Just kind of make your way around. This gives it a little bit more definition. Around we go. Okay. And then again, I would kind of look and say, oh, how, how does that bunker look off the tee? I kind of like that. It looks like just a giant mouth ready to swallow any golf balls that come its way. So I kind of like that. Maybe I would raise this back edge up a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so that's method number two. And then method number three, which uh, I do see some people use. Um, I know Matt F27, he's a pretty popular designer who streams quite a bit on Twitch. I suggest you checking him out. Um, he does another method, which is kind of a neat method. He actually traces the bunker first and then just fills it in with the circular brush, which is kind of neat. So it's a little bit of both. It's almost like splining and using brushes at the same time. So let's say I kind of wanted to do like a little maybe U-shaped bunker. So I would start by using the measure tool and tracing out what I would want. Let's keep it simple here. Something like that. Okay. And then I would go into my brush menu. Surfaces, bunkers, brush. And I would select the circular brush. I would make it really small. And then I would just kind of go around the edge. You know, like I, I like to have where the, um, the distance markers are just inside my circle. And then I'm just going to click and hold. And I'm going to go pretty slow. 
the faster you go, the fewer circles get put down, and you kind of get um, the edges are a little bit messy. I'm actually going a little bit too fast there. As you can see, this is starting to form kind of nicely here. Do, do, do. And bring it back like that, and then I can just fill in the rest like that. Make sure you get every little point. Okay, so I'll get rid of my distance marker. Now I can't do it as good as Matt F does. He has really nice um, edges. I find it's a little bit tougher in this game compared to 2019 to get nice edges in this. Um, yeah, in this game compared to 2019. Not sure why, but it just seems to be. Well, then again, I will up to about 0.5. Flatten it. Remember, I'm going up. Around. There we go. And then I'll do the same here. Where I just kind of raise it up. But again, experiment with this. Just experiment with it. Okay. Now I had a question on my YouTube. What happens if I hit the water table? If you've hit the water table, one of two things have happened. You're either way too deep on your bunkers. You shouldn't be hitting the water table. Or you're placing it in a really shallow area where the water table comes into play. You're going to have to raise the land or not put a bunker there. There's unfortunately no real way around it. So as you can see, my bunker's kind of crooked, and it's just kind of based on the green. So I kind of want my bunker to be a little bit nicer than that. And that involves just kind of taking the entire landscape here. Again, I, I move my green, or I, I don't uh, sculpt my green till the very end because I move it around a lot during construction of my golf hole. So once I have everything where I need it to be, then I will sculpt my greens. But I just showed you back in episode two how to sculpt greens just to show you. All right, so I, I kind of want this a little bit flatter. And again, I kind of want to show the show it off a little bit more. Okay. So something like that. There we go. It's a little funny edge there. Let's see if we can fix that. So just use your little round brush. And then there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, so those are kind of the three main ones. And um, last thing I want to go over is some people want to put bunkers in their fairways. Okay, uh, I wouldn't, for example, put one here. I think the fairway is a bit too narrow, but for wider fairways, um, you know, a lot of link style courses and things like that have in fairway, like center line style bunkers. Now you could just throw a bunker in the fairway. But what I find is it kind of creates this ugly, you know, part. There's rough that shows up partially, but it's just this thin little wimpy line of rough. Sometimes it doesn't even show up. Okay, it's kind of messy. I want kind of a thicker band of rough to show up. So in order to do this, again, I would not do a mid fairway bunker on a fairway like this. There's just the fairway's not wide enough, but I'm just showing you for purpose. Uh, so in order to do this, if you've splined your fairway, um, what I would actually do is I would not fill the spline. There we go. So I, I turned off the spline. So I just went to fill spline and I clicked it. And now I'm back to just a, a line of fairway. We'll fill it in after. So what I would do is I would pick my bunker, create it however way you want. I'm just going to do this really quick. Let's just say I wanted a little bunker like this. Something like that. Okay. And in order for me to now make sure I get a little bit of rough around it, I'm going to create like a barrier. So now I'm going to spline some more fairway and I'm going to spline it around the bunker. 
and I'm going to try to keep it as even as I can with the outside of the bunker. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but makes your bunkers look a little bit better. Okay, so I'm not going to fill the spline. Oh, do you know why this is showing up so bad? Is because my path width was still narrow from before. Okay, perfect. That's why. Uh, so I would make sure I fill the spline. Nope, I not fill the spline. Close the path, not fill the spline. Okay. And then if I wanted to add rough, I'm just going to hit rough, and then I can just fill it in with a brush. And you don't have to worry about it touching the fairway because the fairway is the top layer, so it will not go over the fairway. Fairway is always the top layer, which is kind of frustrating because it makes this a little bit harder. There, once you have your layer of light rough around it, now I can fill in my fairway. But the kind of crappy thing about this is if you just go back and say, oh, I just want to fill my spline, it covers the light rough you just laid down. Because again, it's the top layer. It trumps everything. So you can't do that. What you have to do is you have to go through and use fairway brushes and just fill in, paint your fairway. Okay, so you just kind of go through and make sure you don't miss any spots. See, like it's really easy to miss spots like that. There's nothing worse than when you build a course and then you've done this technique and then someone hits a nice fairway shot and all of a sudden it is uh, <laughs> um, it's in the heavy rough even though you're right dead center of the fairway. So just something to be careful of. Make sure you go over it a few times and you've found all your spots. Yeah, you can do it this way for sure. Just another way of doing bunkers. But like I said, in terms of things like strategy and all that stuff, you could spend forever on... Oh, I went a little bit too far there. Do that. And there you've got a nicer layer of light rough around your bunker, which I think looks a little better than just that thin little layer. Okay, so lots of different bunker techniques. You've kind of got the shapes, the splines, the little circular brush method, and we talked about how to fill in a, an in-fairway bunker that has some rough around it. So that kind of covers the basics. Again, there's so much more I could talk about with bunkers, but I think just for now, we are going to leave it there. And that's, pr I'm probably going to delete a lot of this and I'll probably throw in my own bunkers um, before the next episode because we need to talk about planting. And that's going to, that might be a two-part tutorial. We'll see. Because there's lots to talk about there too. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.